All right. Well, Kevin is back with you for another episode of Million Dollar Relationships. And today I am here with my friend, Tony Rose. Tony, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. It's very nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. And it's been a while uh, since we've talked and I know we were talking about that before we hit the record button here. So I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to this, especially after the conversation we were just having. And uh, what I'd like to do is kind of start off by, uh, you know, you and I, when did we first met? I know we met at Genius Network and Joe Paulus's Genius Network. How long has it been? It's been a while. It, I mean, it's... I'm trying to think how many years ago it was. Six years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Five about, years, six years. Yeah, yeah. Man, time just flies. Time flies, I'll tell you. And, uh, you know, I know you and I uh, made a really good connection a while ago when we found out what a close mutual friend we both had in Sean Stevenson and stuff. Oh, and, absolutely. And uh, Sean uh, had a pretty profound impact on both of our lives, for sure, and stuff. And, uh what I would like to do is just kind of start off by uh, sh having you share a little bit about who you are, what you do, who you serve, what motivates you to do what you do. Just kind of give everybody a little bit of context on, on who is Tony Rose, and we'll just kind of start there. Okay, thanks very much for asking me that. I, I try to make it really succinct who I am. Um, I'm an accountant that doesn't like accounting. Uh, I, 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 I own, I, I am the founder of an accounting firm, which uh, I founded with my then partner, Mary Snyder in 1976. So I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I was 26 years old when I started my firm. So I'm an entrepreneurial accountant uh, dealing with entrepreneurs in our practice. Mostly we have um, people that own businesses. We take care of the businesses that they own, and we also do a, a brisk business in what I call families of wealth. Those are generally entrepreneurs or multi-generational, very wealthy families that we do planning and, and tax work for, as well as uh, we have a small SEC practice as well. So we've kind of got a general practice. We've got 55 people uh, working in five or six different states now. Uh, in, and, and also in India. And we are all over all over the place taking care of anyone that will pay us. Wow. Wow. So what is the most, re so you, you opened the firm in 76. That's, that's, that's correct. You've been doing what you do for quite a while. What is yes. the most, most rewarding thing about doing this kind of work for you personally? Boy, it's making an impact on people's lives. Uh, money is an expression of people's values often, is an expression of who people are. Their businesses is an expression of who they are. And the ability to contribute and help, I call it grease the skids and make things easier for people to do and bring value into the world is really the most important thing. So I would say what I li like most is impact. Uh, there's there's a system uh, of helping understand what your why is. It's it's through something called the Why Institute. I don't know if if you've ever heard of that, Kevin. No. And uh, it's it's a very interesting instrument that helps you understand why you do things in the world. Okay. And my central why is to make sense of things. So my unique ability is to take complex con complex concepts, try to make sense of them, and then give them to my clients so that they can get better value from us and what we do. Gotcha. So you make sense of it. And like, I'm, I'm assuming like simplify it. So your clients understand it a lot easier and, and uh, all that. So very cool. Very cool. That's what we work to do. I don't know that we always accomplish that, but that's what we work to do. <laughs> very good. Very good. Okay. So now that we've kind of got some context uh, and, and, uh, on, on who you are and what you do and all that. Uh, I'm going to shift gears. And what we'll do is uh, I'm going to uh, reiterate the question for the benefit of all the listeners. And so have you ever been introduced to a person 
that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person. And Tony, I'm just really excited to hear your story, your experience around this, as well as give you the opportunity to honor somebody who's had such a profound impact on your life and on your business. I absolutely do have one person that comes to mind. There are, for, I, I will say, Kevin, that there are several people sure. in my life that has helped shape the trajectory, but it all began with one person. And so I'd like to maybe spend some time telling the story. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. This goes all the way back to my college days. Okay. I married my high school sweetheart. And I don't know why we were in such a rush to get out of the house, but I married my high school sweetheart when I was still in accounting school. And, and, and I went to the University of Southern California. Uh, I became an accounting major because, because I, it was a, being an accountant, I could make $875 a month. And I originally wanted to be a history teacher and history teachers only made $825 a month. So I went into the accounting program at USC because I could do it really well. So I love easy. So it, it felt easy to me and I could make 50 bucks a month more. And I became an accounting student. I had a professor whose name was Jack Larson. He may have been one of the most hated professors in the School of Business at University of Southern California. The reason why he was so hated is that he was really tough. And I actually had him for two classes. I had him for auditing. Accountants go in and look at people's books and audit them to help express an opinion as to whether their books are fair, fairly presented. And, and I also had him for advanced accounting. One thing that Jack Larson insisted upon was great communication skills and great writing skills. So he would grade papers on two levels, whether you actually knew the content, number one, and number two, whether you wrote it down properly with proper grammar, correct spelling, okay. correct yeah. writing. And he even gave me a paper once in audit that said you have an A in content and a D in writing skills. Mm -hmm. And so you get a C plus. And I went to him and said, wait a second, I knew the material. How could you give me a C plus? And he looked at me and he said, if you can't communicate it, you don't know it. And that's something that stayed with me for a very, very long time. Wow. Fast forward. And it's now Vietnam protest time and Kent State and all that kind of stuff. And way back when, if you remember what happened at Kent State, uh, National Guard uh, shot several protesting students oh, yeah. at Kent State University. Yeah. And at that time, the college community around the country exploded and people went on strike. And I was, in, in my uh, late, I think, junior year, maybe sophomore year, or, or senior year at, at USC, and we went on strike, and we invaded the student union, and I was sitting there with some friends, um, and, and it turns out that Dr. Larson was the advisor to a sorority, and I was sitting with a group of women uh, who are protesting, and he walked up to us and said, come have dinner with me. I want to understand what you're upset about. That's a free dinner. I was going to say yes, for sure. <laughs> and we went to dinner and spent the evening together. I remember I had steak and lobster. I remember it very vividly because I'd never been able to have steak, steak and lobster or afford it. And that, so I saw a piece of Dr. Larson that no other student had seen uh, very often. Fast forward to my first job. 
I went to work for a major company, Grant Thornton. At that time, it was called Alexander Grant. And I became an auditor. And I was the lousiest auditor there was in the world. Really crappy. And after seven months, I got fired. Now, I was newly married. And I was fired. I didn't have a job. I didn't know what to do. And I called Dr. Larson and said, I've been fired from my first job. What do I do? And he said, let me call you back. After about two or three hours, he called me back. And he said, I talked to a guy who was an instructor here who has his own accounting firm. His name is Bill Tilly. Why don't you go and talk to them? They're looking for people. And in two or three days, I had interviewed and got hired by Bill Tilly's firm. And that changed the trajectory of my life because there I met my mentor, Mary Snyder. We started our firm together. We not only serviced Bill Tilly and his family after he sold his practice, but many, many of those clients that were in that original firm and they are clients to this day. Wow. So, so when we go back to discuss Jack Larson, he didn't have to call me back. He didn't have to make an inquiry. He could have blown me off and he chose not to. And it changed the complete trajectory of my life. Yeah. We still yeah. do Jack Larson's widow as a, as a client. Um, and we give her largely, hugely discounted fees because without Jack, Jack Larson, I wouldn't have met Kevin Thompson. Sure, sure. Yeah. So that's my story. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's really amazing. And so what are, so in a, the landscapers are here and like they're right outside my window right now. So hopefully it's not too loud. And so, but uh, yeah. um, um, what are some, what, what is one or two uh, things that really stand out in your mind that have come as a direct result of Jack Larson? And, and just what, you know, cause I, that, that's that's a really powerful relationship. And I want to remind everybody listening, we are talking about one single relationship here and the value of relationships. And so I really want to drive this point home and press upon people. So what are what are one or two things that have just really that stand out for you that have happened as a result of this relationship that you've had with Jack that wouldn't have happened without that? Well, first of all, the power of communication, the power of written communication, yep. the power of being able to uh, put down on paper or on computer now, uh, what you mean to say in a way that's consumable by the people that you want to consume your thoughts and your value. If you cannot write it well in ways that people understand, then you don't you don't have a shot at really being able to deliver your value. Yep. yep. So the power of the written word is something that really is incredible. My, my daughter's fiance is a MBA candidate at University of Southern California now. And we have those discussions about the importance of being able to write in, in, his, in his writings to his professors in a powerful and, and, and good way with proper grammar, proper spelling. And I know that was a burden, that's a burden for many people to have to learn how to do that. And a lot of this, gen, the, the younger generation now does not see the importance of that, but that was a really, really strong lesson. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, the power of relationship. The fact that I was able to develop a relationship with Jack Larson, and I felt that I could call him and say, I'm in trouble, I need help. And the fact that he reciprocated was so, so important to me. He didn't have to take the trouble to call Bill Tilly and find out if there was a space for me. 
And he did that. And he didn't have to do that. Uh, the, the, the unpredictability of a kindness in a positive way has a huge amount of power in my, yeah. in my judgment. Um, when Jack became sick in his final days and his, his widow and Jack reached out to me for help, there was no way I wasn't going to help him. There was no way I wasn't going to love him and, and, and do the best I could to take care of him because of that earlier kindness. Why would you not ever reciprocate? That is the currency of today. Relationship is money. And, it's, it, 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 and, and, it, and it creates other intangibles that um, I, I have on, my, on, on our website and in my podcast, a discussion about, about uh, the power of relationship and, and the fact that uh, without relationships, you don't have a business. And in order to have a relationship, there has to be authentic, authentic, authenticity yeah. and, and an honoring of your values. So many people, Kevin, aren't even in touch with what their values are. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, you're right. and so, you know, for Jack, great grammar, great communication skills, that was a huge value, even if he was hated on campus because he forced students to be that. It's something that these students took with them in their whole lifetime. And that was important to me. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Tony, I want to thank you. Man, this this is really powerful, Tony. This is because you know, you you and I are in so much agreement on this. And and this has become so evident for me in, in the course of doing this podcast and having these conversations with so many entrepreneurs. And uh, you know, that that relationship. And relationships and relationship capital are truly the most valuable asset we possess. Absolutely. And when, and when we have that, everything else will take care of itself. And you're right, you know, relationships are money. Relation, I mean, like, you know, and, and if, if more people viewed relationships that way, uh, the whole world would be a better place. You know? <laughs> so, well, I, I think, Kevin, you and I would not know each other if it wasn't for the importance of the power of relationship. Yeah. And, and, and that has very value um, in, in, in my books. I write a lot about not, not necessarily the value of intimate relationships, but also the value of casual relationships. You bet, you bet. And, 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 and that's, and that's something that's important for everyone to understand. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Tony, for anybody listening that, that says, man, Kev, Kev, I really like Tony. I like what he's talking about. I like the way he shows up. Uh, you know, if they wanted to follow up or get more insight into what you guys are doing, how can, how can they go about doing that, Tony? Well, I, I think there's a couple of ways. Uh, we, I just published a book uh, called Go Beyond Numbers. That's okay. available on Amazon. And, and I think there's a website called gobeyondnumbers.com. Uh, as well as rsjcpa.com is the accounting firm. And you can connect to my thinking on that website as well. Okay. That, that would be, those are two ways to do it. Very good. Very good. Well, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation today and share, you know, your experience around this. Any, any last words before we call it a wrap? Um, I, I very much enjoy you, Kevin, and I think what you're doing is very important, and I'm looking forward to when you publish that book that summarizes all these podcasts so we can get some great lessons from great entrepreneurs. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, that, that may very well be forthcoming. <laughs> so, well, Tony, thanks so much again. Really appreciate it, my friend. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks.